Well, welcome to this ValueMed presentation for the 5-in-1 cholesterol meter sold through ValueMed. It comes in both AccuCheck and EcoTest branding. The instructions are identical for whichever branding you have, but do ensure that your test strips match the branding on the digital meter. So let's show you what's included inside the box. Unboxed, you have a set of instructions, which we're not showing you today. We do a full video on instructions separately. You will have purchased a pack of a minimum of 10 of the test devices in the same branding as the meter. Some of our bundles include 50 test strips, but they will include the test code chip that we're going to use in a second. The digital meter is a simple handheld device. Battery port is on the rear. I'm just going to open that up and show you. There are symbols showing you the correct battery alignment in the rear of the meter. Also supplied will be the batteries and a pack of two cholesterol check devices. Now these don't have to be used initially on setup, but they can be used at any time up to the expiry date shown on there to check the optical function of the digital meter. They can be used multiple times, but must be used within 12 months of the seal being broken. So do not open these until you require to do a test. So let's put the batteries in and show you the setup on this meter. If I turn it over, just move the additional kit out of the way. Follow the alignment shown in the base of the battery compartment. And as you put the final battery in, you should hear the meter beep. There we go. If I turn it over and depress the power button, the first thing it's going to ask me to do is to insert the uh, code chip. So this is one of the code chip devices supplied with the test strips. The port for this is on the side of the meter and it's simply pushed into the body of the meter. There we go. If I turn that over, it should recognize that test uh, code chip L0059 in this instance. Yours may be different. I'm going to put the battery compartment lid back on now. And the next thing I'm going to show you, if you're wanting to use the function of memory and uh, recall of the memory of the tests that you perform, is to set the correct time and date. So push and depress the power button. It takes you to a menu choice. We're going to go into system menu by depressing it again. And the first one that should come up when I do that properly is time and date. There we go, date set. So I'm going to depress that again. And it's in the format of hour, minute, month, day, and year. So I'm going to increase the hour to 14.35. It's only April, so I'm using the down button. These two arrow buttons can be used to go up or down. It's April, and the day is the 2nd. When I'm happy with the hour and the month and day, I'm going to select the year for 2024. And that's all set. Now, you can either leave that to power down naturally, or if you want to move through to running a test, just hold and depress the power button again. And it takes you back to date set. And if I navigate down to back and down to exit, it should there be fully programmed with the time and date. So it's now asking me to insert a test strip. You see these three LEDs flashing down here. It's wanting to perform the first test. If you do nothing now, the meter will automatically power down after a minute to save battery power. And when you are ready to perform your first test, you're all ready to go and it will retain the date, time and readings for you. Now, before you perform your first test, it's important to prepare the hand that you're going to do the finger lance on. Make sure that it is well perfused, pink and warm. Wash the hands well with soap and water and allow them to completely dry. You must have no moisture on the hands as this will interfere with the sample collection. Massage the fingers if you have any concern about the peripheral capillary perfusion. They should be really pink and warm. If not, then don't attempt to test because it's unlikely that you'll get sufficient blood from the finger lance. Massage the fingers in this fashion and that will create maximum perfusion. The best finger to actually perform the lance on, in our opinion, is the middle finger or ring finger. The middle tends to be the most capillary 
rich and the least sensitive. When you're doing your lance, do it on the side of the finger, not the flat surface, and ensure that the surface is well supported, ideally with the thumb, just in that fashion. So let's prepare the meter ready to take the sample, and then we will show you the correct lancing technique with the safety lancets and how to use the pipettes, which with the black line will naturally fill with your blood sample once correctly aligned with it and give the exact correct volume of blood for the test device to give you an accurate measurement. So when you are happy with the capillary flushing being good and you're ready to sample, remove the test device from its protective foil, press the power button on the meter and insert a test device for the matching code chip. You'll see the device will print preparing and then a blood sample will flash indicating that the device is ready to take the blood sample. When you are ready to sample, remove the cover from the safety lancet, brace the side of the finger you're about to lance and push firmly with the safety lancet against the finger. Do not be timid, it's important you get a good blood sample. There we go. Now wipe the first droplet away and allow the second droplet to form naturally. Then use the capillary tube just by placing it in the blood sample. You must not squeeze the bulb. You see I'm bleeding really well with that until it fills to the black line. When it has done so, Squeeze the pipette to discharge the blood sample into the sample well. Discharge all the blood sample into the sample well on the test device. If you have formed any air pockets in the capillary tube, do not use that sample, it will be insufficient. Relance and use a fresh capillary tube to get your sample for testing. Now you'll see that the meter is now reading the sample. It'll take a minute or so to analyze that sample for me. It's important that this is performed in good bright conditions because this is an optical analysis test and that you give it an adequate and good quality sample. If despite following the advice we've just given you there, you still do not bleed well and produce good samples, an additional tip is to purchase and use a tourniquet around the wrist or forearm applied for a couple of minutes before you do the finger lance as this will increase the capillary fullness and the likelihood of you getting a good naturally formed blood sample. If you do need to squeeze the fingers to ooze the blood out to collect, it is likely that the sample will not give an accurate result. It is very critical that you get a good deep lance and a naturally formed second full 35 microliter droplet in the pipette for analysis. And there we have it. There is my cholesterol readings just showing up now. 4.98 millimoles per liter total cholesterol, an HDL of 0.7, a total triglyceride level of 2.18 and an LDL of 3.28 giving a TC to HDL ratio of 7.1 and you can see that that reading is recorded and time printed for 1442 on the 2nd of April 2024. So I hope you find this information and advice useful. It is critical to get the good samples using a good lance technique for accurate readings using this meter. And this is the area of the procedure that most people fail on until they have practice adequately. It's not down to meter insufficiency or technical issues. It all comes down to getting a really good quality blood sample. And if you can master that, then this meter will give you extremely accurate lipid profiles every single test. Thanks for watching.